Listen, we have it in now. Listen, before we even got on camera, we was going crazy in here. We was having a spirited debate. We got we got started late. Man, listen, I am over the moon right now. Hey. Um just the fact that we're here. I don't wanna I don't I don't know if it's onions in the room. I ain't gonna cry or nothing like that. But <laughs> it was I, I'll say before we even get started, I wanna pray, but you know, it was hard to get to this place right now. You know, to sit down right here with so many obstacles. Um so I didn't think we would be sitting here. So many things we had to do, so many adjustments that had to be made, but um we did it and we're sitting here right now. And I wanna just, you know, I wanna, you know, set our hearts before we get started and pray and give God the honor because without God, I would not even be sitting here right now. Amen. And I got, you know, these beautiful people sitting here with me, um, ready to have a productive conversation about moving our culture forward, about helping the world, not just the culture, but the world move forward as well. So I want to, you know, bow our heads um, and, and, and pray on camera and give God his glory out loud. So, you know, God, I thank you for your patience. God, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for giving me um, and giving the men and the women in this room the strength to be able to um, persevere through their hard times. I thank you, God, for everybody that's listening, um, that they may get some out of this um, conversation that we're building today. God, I thank you for the organization that you're building. God, I thank you for um, the people that's behind the camera. I thank you for the people that's watching. I thank you for everything that you've done. I thank you, most importantly, God, for just waking me up this morning. Thank you. I can't even go no farther than that, God. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 Listen, we're going to have yeah. a podcast, though. Yes, sir. God, if I cuss, don't take that. <laughs> <laughs> when you cuss. You're under grace, when I cuss. No. You're under grace. So I'll say this. We'll get started with a little a little lighter subject, man. We, we It's NFL week one tap. Mm. You got on the right hat. Yeah, absolutely. You Listen, you got it blended, too. You got to be unbiased, bro. You got to be unbiased, man. Come on. I'm not being unbiased. I'm not being, I'm just, all I'm saying is he got on the good hat. I'm not saying I'm a Cowboy fan. I'm just saying, you know, Cowboy fans. It wouldn't be a problem if you were. It's America's team. It is. You live in America. So might not be a fan. Why not be a fan? It's a MAGA. I'm a fan. Hey, Tap. Tap. Oh, some oh wow. Tap. Oh wow. That's it's funny. blue. It's not even red. He's wow. he, 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 the grace. He's from the grace period, right? This, he's doing his grace period. Listen, no, he's a full fledged. Oh, he's been. Oh, he's baptized. He's already, okay, but, I'll, but I'll even say this. Okay. Even even with you know, Cabo, I watched the Cowboys and the Buccaneers, and mm. and the one thing I noticed, Tap, um, there was just fandom aside, it was elite football played in that game. It was even over the weekend. It was a lot of game. Well, except the Falcons, sorry. Oh, um, no. <laughs> my bad, my boy. Shade trees in the room. You good? Wow, that was but a great it, it's example. been wow. it's, it's been an elite <laughs> level of um play in the league right now. You know, a lot of teams have elite quarterbacks. There's a lot of elite quarterbacks in the league. Um, Russell Wilson, I, I was surprised by Kyler Murray. Um, it, it, even even uh, Justin Herbert. I think there's a lot of young studs in the league right now. Um, and one thing I'm particularly upset about, and um, Jay, we kind of talked about this in the barbershop, I cannot believe Justin Fields is not started. It is amazing to me that they let Andy Dalton um, play in front of this this superstar kid. And I, and I got to thinking, why? Because Trevor Lawrence is starting. Zach Wilson is starting. And Andy Dalton – on any team is a certified second, third quarterback at this point in his career. Why could that be? And it got me to thinking, and I'm not playing the race card, but I'm just talking about reality. The way black quarterbacks are treated, um, and, and that was a clear indication. We're in 2021. This man, since high school, has been the number one quarterback. Not even, and they, they throw the dual, dual threat, you know, stigma on black quarterbacks. <laughs> Um, like it's a disadvantage, but he's shown he was proficient. He's played at Ohio State. He's won the big game. He beat Trevor Lawrence, the number one pick in the big game. He's beat a lot of different quarterbacks. And, and, no, and I think Zach Wilson has a fluid on. I think he's great. I think Trevor Lawrence is great. So this is not a knock against them. What I'm trying to do is say, why didn't Justin Fields play last week? Yeah, Willie, 
eventually come in? Why wasn't he ready? And I think tap that's the stigma on black quarterbacks and the way they treat them and the way Cam has been treated. So I want to I want to stay on Justin Fields. I want to go to the Cam situation for a second because that's why I was segmenting to the black quarterback. Do you think Cam was cut from the Patriots because of? Do you think his attitude and the way he carried himself he outpriced his own value? Because the way the league sees him, the way the owner sees him, is his – I don't know if it's worth it anymore for them um, based on his play. Why do you think he was cut? I think it's I think it's even simpler than that. I think he became a liability. I don't think that they could trust him anymore being unvaccinated. Mm. We're going to go there later. Because there's a, there's a real thing. Mm. There's a real thing opposed to – vaccinated players when you are when you are vaccinated opposed to unvaccinated players the way the way they the, treat the, the situation time, oh yeah absolutely absolutely you're definitely going to miss a game if you're not vaccinated you're absolutely do you think if cam was in contact. Cam, but do you think it's cam, so I'll say this D do you think is if cam was in carolina regardless of the vaccination would he have been cut Let's be clear. If no. he was the starting quarter, there's no, no. way he would have been no cut. Way he no. been That's cut. why I say the vaccine no was the easiest thing to use, which we're going to talk about later. That was the easiest thing to use. I'm not going to say it's because he was black. I'm going to say well, it's what because. are we saying? You saying if he was in Carolina, like as the star still? Even he wasn't that to the Patriots. Well, I ain't going to say he the was. The Patriots didn't know that. But the, but the deck of cards he was playing with was unfair, Cap. That Come on now. It was not unfair. It was Look not what that Patriots team he played they with last year. They had countless of instances with Cam dealing with COVID. Well, he got COVID well, one he, year, right? He got but, but COVID that, last year. That was just then last a couple year. of times this year. There was some infant. I don't was, remember him getting COVID. What he happened was last year. Last year, I don't know about this year. Last year, last year, last year, he got it. This year, I watched his interview with him and his dad. It was an approved visit to Atlanta. By the team, and he had to come back and sit out five days just for protocol. And they used that protocol to as an excuse to contribute to cutting him. It was approved by the team. So, do do you think what what was the reason in your in your opinion, Jay? Um, why can't I, I'm I'm flabbergasted? I'm gonna be honest. I know Mac Jones is their future. I just cannot fathom Cam Newton prior to him getting hurt. Cam Newton was playing good football. He was. Prior to the pandemic, him getting hurt, Cam Newton was playing. I can understand Carolina being ready to move on, but Cam Newton was playing good football nevertheless. Jay, why do you think he got cut? His personality is way too big. And not, not in a bad way. But when it comes down to um, that particular franchise, I think that Cam's play no longer matches his personality. That's what I was trying yeah, to say. Or yeah, it was time for them again. They they decided that it wasn't worth it. Anymore. Does that speak to a deeper issue, Scott? That that's what I'm saying. Like because let me give you let me give you a, a rival example or, or what I think is a, a is an equivalency to it. Eli Manning, Eli Manning just kept throwing interceptions, <laughs> but Eli Manning imagery to the media to 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 the power structure wasn't intimidating. He, he Eli did Manning it by the book. Tom Brady. Huh? Twice. Eli Manning beat Tom Brady. Twice. 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 For the big game. I'm talking about towards the end of his career. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're but not going to compare. We're not, we not going to do this. He threw, he threw picks all through his career. That, but what I'm saying, at the end, it got bad. It was awful at the end. What well, I'm saying is Cam is on yeah. the back end of his career, and Eli Manning played five years past um, his prime. Maybe six year, years past his prime. And he never... It was there. It was some talks about him maybe being cut kicking, but for the most part, he had, he kept his job. But Cam Newton get cut. Get this guy get cut over a rookie? Yeah, that's an unfair what? comparison. It though. is. Oh. Eli Manning is a two time Super Bowl, and that's champion. what I was gonna say. That's fine. Super Bowl right. MVP. No, that's fine. You mean tell me? Oh, you saying Cam Eli Manning is no better way. than Cam Newton? That's what. No, he bought his time. Eli Manning clearly bought the extra five years that he got. Past his prime. When you give a team two rings, that's fine. A, okay, it wasn't because that's of him. That's a good point. It wasn't because of him. But let's be. But Eli Manning was. Let come on. Now, it was I'll not because you, of him. That's a small. That's a good point. Compared to two, but it ain't the only point. It's a good one, but it's not the only. point. I'm a Giants fan, so I agree that I agree with both points. But to Tap's point, 
it's an unfair comparison. That's yeah. the wrong comparison you want to make. I wouldn't compare that to, to I wouldn't compare Cam to Eli. I wouldn't. I, I, I don't know why. Just, I would. Other, I would. I don't know what Cam. So I, I'll give you two. Go ahead. Please, please let me know. Cam's last name is Newton. What's Eli's last name? Manning. Okay. There was something about that. That's, what I was, that, that. that's the point You're I was right. trying to make. So, to Tap's point, that buys you a little bit of credit. No, but what I'm saying is. Right or wrong. I, I'll right or get, wrong. That's my point. It was legacy in the league, too. But I'm not going to say it was because of color, but I'm going to say, I ain't going to say it wasn't because of color. But it had something to do with it. The way that we're treated, my point, the whole point I'm trying to make here is the way that we're treated as quarterbacks in the NFL is criminal to me. The way we're judged, the way we're looked at, the way that black, the, the rigorous nature. Lamar Jackson has is, is still, now he has some things to work on. He has to be developed. But the way he gets talked about, like he hasn't won a playoff game, like he hasn't been an MVP. Jay, you like you disagreeing over there? I am. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Who was the quarterback when Lamar came in? Huh? Who was the quarterback when Lamar came in? Joe Flacco. Mm-hmm. Who's the quarterback now? Lamar Jackson. They sent Flacco. Flacco. Uh, no, no. Well, I'm talking about the criticism. Right? I, I get the criticism. I'm, I'm just saying the way the criti- the fa- the unfair criticism. And that's not, but that's it's not, not his new business. Reason. What people that, that, that's Rand- Randall right. Cunningham at the same. That, that's my point. Yeah, that yeah. when are we play the game? So here's the thing. When are we? When are we going to evolve to the point to understand? Because I started with Justin Fields, and he is everything you want in a quarterback. He has absolutely unequivocally no weaknesses as a quarterback, and he's still treated the same. But my I disagree with that. Yeah. Why, why can't, I think that. Cream, the NFL is about one thing, and it's winning. Cream of course. will eventually rise to the top. So what if they are giving him a little bit of time to develop? That's what I was going to say. What if they're working with him to make sure that when he makes his debut, that he's ready? Because we've seen a lot of black quarterbacks come into the league and fail because they went into a program that – wasn't exactly my point. The stigma. That, that's what I'm saying. The, it's the it's how it's how they call plays for us. It's how they look at us. That's my that's my point. It's it's even how the Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham, Cordell Stewart. It, as soon as he came into the league, they called him what the slasher. And and, and what's it O'Donnell? They shot quarterback Keith O'Donnell. He he was terrible. Cordell Stewart could have played for the Steelers, but he got labeled. Is my point. All. Of, but he could have been the quarterback is what I'm saying. He was a great quarterback at Colorado. But I ain't going to belabor that point. Hold on. Can, 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 Go ahead. Let me pick up what Jay was saying. I, I think it's going to help Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about when they came to the league, they actually lowered. You remember we talked about this? They stopped marketing Trevor Lawrence. They didn't. You wasn't hearing about him. Want to know why? They wanted to lower their expectations. You all think you heard with Justin Fields. They wanted to put him up here. Yeah. I think the Bears are saying, you know, let's protect this young man. He's going to be our future. Let's protect him. So you let that, you let all that dust die down. So that when he comes to make a debut, he knows he's ready, but the expectations have come down. Can I, can I, can I push back this a little Go bit? Go ahead. Sure. They're lowering the expectation for no reason. Them Peyton Mannings and Trevor Lawrence's, they come in and start immediately. Getting That's that my starting point. time. They're starting early, seeing this defense early. That's what seeing I'm what, That's the, what the game deal. is like. But, but see, this also is, this is part of the reason I'm a little familiar with that the Bears situation. The only reason that Andy Dalton left Dallas was for a starting quarterback job. The Bears promised him that he was going to be the starting quarterback. Oh, we trust the NFL It didn't now? say how long he was going to be the starting quarterback. <laughs> oh, you trust the NFL? They said he was going to be the starting quarterback. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're but they was never went against like, no, a quarterback Chicago in the first never round. said that it was a quarterback contra- competition. Mm. Ever. ever. That's a good point. They've always said that Andy Dalton was their quarterback. Mm. For now. <laughs> That's We're crazy. talking about Andy, Dal- Andy Dalton, but that's what that's the reason that he can't, he went there. But I so, think you so protect, would y'all rather you if Trevor okay, you let, your if Trevor Lawrence if Trevor Lawrence had got drafted to the Bears, Absolutely. he would be the starting Start. quarterback. If Zach Wilson had right got now. drafted to the Bears, he would be the starting quarterback. I agree. They would have never went and got Andy Dalton. Just like when Andrew Luck started, even Tim Couch, Ryan Lee, we can go all the way back all of to all the court, the white quarterbacks that came in, highly talented. They started. Was it a recipe for success though? Because everybody, everybody you just mentioned. What, you know, what, what I'm saying is they got the opportunity. Best. But, but they got the opportunity. What I'm saying is well, so we're not the opportunity. We can process right information. The wrong time. Didn't it's Kyle, not a, it's not a, it's not a good thing. Who? Kyler Murray. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah Kyler Murray. He did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. But there, I, I, there was no other option either. What about Jalen, <laughs> Jalen Hurts did? <laughs> and he's nice. Jalen Hurts is nice, but, it, he but no, he's off the bat. He wasn't the starter. And I say he didn't. That's okay. my point. He did not start. But you, you got Jalen Hurts is not nice. They're I like protect him. their he's investment. They're going to protect like their investment. I think they look at this thing. You know what? This is our guy for the next ten years. 
We're not gonna put them out there on front. All right, right. So I got one I thing before we go to the next. Before we go to the next one, because we got some other serious topics to go to. But I want to ask before we leave sports, Evan, what do you got to say about sports? So, but, but speaking of that, I want to go to this, man, a little more serious topic. But, you know, anyway, the NFL will be kind of touching some topics, mm-hmm. you know, a lo- little bit. Um, and we'll have some other sports stuff that we'll do live on our, our Instagram and kind of go more in depth into the sports conversation. But we want to kind of leave this to a little bit more social topics and serious topics. But I want to go to this. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now, um, somewhere that we've really never been before. And it's, it, it's been eye opening, to say the least. Um, you know, at first last year, it was, you know, there was a ambiguous nature, not knowing what the, the COVID-19 really was kind of came out of nowhere, you know, June, May, well, I think it was May, June, July, next, last year, we kind of, what we doing, what we doing, what we doing. And, you know, everybody was kind of in the house. So, you know, we didn't really know what to do with it, but then came along, um, they said they had a cure for it. <laughs> Not necessarily a cure, but a you know a shot for it to 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 help, you, <coughs> so to speak. Uh, we got a lot of grumbling in the room. If everybody hear that, <laughs> but but you know we've gotten to this point. Keegan, Jay, and Tapping Ebony, D, Keegan and Scott, we gotten to the point to where now, you know we're we're having uh, broad and, and and spirited discussions about you know whether or not to get you know the vaccine and what we've seen come out. It's gotten to the point now where our um, our nation is, you know, starting to mandate us getting it. You know, I w- we was in New Orleans tapping. Um, everywhere we went, you had to show your vaccination card. So, you know, and a lot of people feels like that infringes on their rights. It feels like um, something different. Um, so I want to ask you, I'm going to start off with you, Keegan. I want I want to ask you about the mandate that's going down. We all, everybody knows about it. <coughs> I want to ask you, you know, how do you feel about the mandate right now um, of kind of it's starting to go that route, as we can see. It's starting with you can't go in bars and things like that, but it's going to eventually get to the point to where um, it's either even a lot of employees are doing it right now. They kind of they're grooming you and massaging you for it. Um, What is your thought on, you know, mandatory vaccinations? It's unconstitutional. It's a simple response. Um, you are infringing. You are infringing on people's rights. It's as you must agree, as that. Jay. You must Absolutely. agree. It's as simple as that. <laughs> because, be, well, I mean, it, it's not even a complicated thing. You know, we can talk about the wise. I get that. And if you if you support the wise and let that person make their own individual decision, but when you start mandating uh, a product to put in my body, where will it stop? And see, what happens is they will use these ca- these. Uh, these tragedies and these tragic events to push certain things like this. And we say, okay, we're going to do it because it, it, it saves everybody else. But then what happens when they say, well, you know, we think blacks are inferior. They can't go over here. We're going to make that law. That's exactly where I was going. It's been that way what, before. What does it stop? No. What do you mean, Jay? It's, it's been that way yeah. before. We just, I mean, we're not too far removed from Jim Crow. No question. And, 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 it, and it troubles me to, to see our people so willing to give our freedom away. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean when you say give our freedom away? Because if, if you allow the government to tell you that instead of taking care of your own body and trusting your own immune system to do what God created it to do, that you have to introduce this foreign substance, that most of us don't even know what it is. We've so done no research. That just and got FDA. That. Just got FDA approved. Got so D, you got to. So, there's there's oh, absolutely oh. no science to tell you what the long term effects are. He yeah. has a response. Give me my immune system. There are anything. you. No long term. This is all about you choice. It's choice. Yeah. Officially, there's no man. You mandate. do not. There's no mandate. There's no government. That's where. Mandate. There's a mandate. Where. There's a mandate. So so. Where's there a mandate? The, the law states that not the mandate. Everybody who was frontline employees or working certain critical oh, jobs. Oh, government. Yeah. And then Atrium is a private, mm-hmm. Novant, whoever, they're private. Has over you have a choice mm-hmm. to oh, take it mm-hmm. or not. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. There's, no gov- there's no government mandate unless you work for the, the government. government. Yeah. That's it. That's the starting point. After that... There's no mandate. So yeah. let, but let, the there's but no D. mandate. Oh, 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 now, if you, you okay choose, so choose to. Are you okay D. with it being mandated? D. D. If you so, I, I, listen, I, 
I'm just telling you. I'm just. I'm giving. I don't. I don't live in a fairy tale. I don't live in a fairy tale. Let's bring it back for a second. Yes, sir. So you're correct. It's for government employees. Yes. Now, are government employees citizens too? Yes. So just because they work for the state means they got to have their right. Government is different. Absolutely. So being government has always been different. Employment in itself is different. You you have a choice to work there. I can easily leave and not have to take your your vaccine at all. True. Okay. To your point. So everybody at Atrium walks out tomorrow while your mom is in there. What happens? That's their choice. I can't do okay, about it's that. It's Atrium's job to, to, so to I'm with out of that. You're good with it. I'm I out of that. Be because it's not my choice on who I'm works to the mic, you're, you're not good with it. Listen, if if it's if it's not if I have my own business and I make it a choice to say I want my employees to be vaccinated, and if they don't want to be vaccinated, they can leave. I'm with it. That's my choice as an employer. Okay. So. I, it's so, no different for the government okay, simply so because you drive around so all over Charlotte for, now. I want to go to Ebony for a second. So Ebony, so and, and I want to. So your point is, but you know, you talk about what we put in our body, but we put a lot of things in our body we don't know. What you the, have a choice I, as long as it's a choice. choice. I get that's okay. Right. As 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 long, I get what you're saying. He, you so he asked about a mandate. Yeah. He, so the so question was about a mandate. You don't. It should be mandate. The question was about for a anybody, mandate. Private or public, shouldn't be a, that's shouldn't what be a mandate. Talk, that's what we're speaking to, a mandate. I don't care what people choose. If you want to smoke crack, my... You just don't want the to choice you. to go away. Exactly. Give me Got your choice. So, so let, me, me let me ask you this question. What, what, is, what is your choice cost when, when, when there's... Again, there's a lot of ambiguity about, uh, ambiguity about this disease. We don't know much about it. So could the mandate be out of... And just, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Could the mandate be out of protecting something that you don't really understand right now? I don't care. I rather. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm the type of man that I would rather die standing on my feet. Set it in the cap. Set it in the mic. I'd rather die standing on my feet and standing on what I believe. I don't want to be full. I don't want anything to be forced on me. I so are you assuming decision. that you have rights? We, we don't have rights. I'm okay, a, I'm that, a, that, I, I, and I that's the that's the question, I, and I think no that's rights. the biggest Good thing Steve. when it comes we to have this. No rights. I, we, we talk about mandate. We're assuming that we're free. So, Evan, let me ask you this question: Where did the fear of the vaccine like? Where where did because we've took flu shots? We've never had this never broad had of, a flu but, but but a lot of people I, have. I never had the flu. Damn, you different. You different. You, you, you got to take shots to go to school. Never had the flu. Never took the flu. You ever took flu shots? I took a flu shot. You got you got. I did. Did y'all take the chick? What about? That's about it. You got to have somebody sign off. A religious on a piece of exemption. Paper. That's it. Everybody doesn't have to take shots to go to school. The majority of people do. Have what to shots take. do you take to go to school? There are several shots that you had to take. Yeah. To go that to you school. have to sure. take. That. What, what shots, shots do you pub, take? Pub, public school. Public school. Right. Correct. Public school. Where did the fear of the vaccine come from? What did this the fear that we have? And I'm not saying Jay has any fear. I'm just saying because there is a there's a hysteria about it right now, and, and, and I I feel a little queasy about it. Um, cause I don't know, you know, it, it, it's so again, when you don't know something, you try to, you're trying to figure it out the best you can. So, you know, what did, what did it come from, Evan, in your opinion? I like your dreads too. Thank you. It's like curly fries <laughs> <laughs> from my Arby's. Go ahead. Um, I think for the black community, I, it's obvious where it comes from. Um, the Tuskegee exper mm. experiment is the most notable thing that I can think of. But in addition to that, black people were literally used for scientific experiments for medical advances mm -hmm. as if we didn't experience pain to the same level as any other race. So in history, when it comes to us and medicine, it's a scary place for us. Going to the doctor, when I seek out my doctors, I'm Googling black dentists. Mm -hmm. Black um, gynecologists, I want black people checking me out because I don't, I just don't trust, I don't trust the white doctors. And, 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 or any doctors, not just the white, because it, because you know your own kind has your best interest at heart, or at least that's the most that, applicable option yes. that you could have at that time because you, they, you know they understand you. But I want to go to a spiritual question for you, Ivan. <laughs> don't, don't talk deep in the mic either, and you would not gaze at me in the eyes. <laughs> With a taco meat out. <laughs> yeah. Now you about to knock the mic over. <laughs> Ooh yeah. Um, <laughs> listen. But so let me ask you, Ivan, do you believe spiritually? And I want to go here for a second. Do you think, Ivan, this is a prerequisite of what some call the mark of the beast? Because it feels biblical, it feels like revelation, it feels like, 
you know, people getting that. I think the queasiness comes from that people have read you having to do something against your own will. Do you think this is a prerequisite or kind of getting us ready for what they call the mark of the beast in the Bible? Keegan, you can go there too if you want to answer that question. I'd rather not. Go ahead, Ivan. No, nah, I want you to ask the question too. <laughs> no, I don't. And the reason why is because I think the mark of the beast is already taking place. It's your cell phone. And so you deep. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. Go ahead. Um, it's the thing that connects you to everything. It could it could it and, and go ahead. It's the thing that connects you to everything, and it's the thing that everybody has access to. And so if you're looking to actually mark somebody, you're not gonna do it with something that they don't want. You're gonna do it with something that they do want. You're going to appease them. So no, I don't think the vaccine is the start of what's considered to be the mark of the beast. Now, do I agree with it? No, I don't. Why don't you but agree with it? Because most vaccinations, they are tested in most cases for a decade before they're actually even put out for people. To I thought it was 18 months. No. no. Go ahead. No. Minimum, no. Three to five, minimum three to five years. Okay. Yes. Minimum. And so with the fact that it's untested, we don't know what these foreign things are going to do long-term effect for the body how many times do we see the commercial 10 15 Mm -hmm. years after the fact (laughs) if you have come in contact with this do you know the commercials that they be saying they be like well if you don't you'll die if you do this Mm -hmm. if you got this this and this this will be this will happen if you got this this or this i've seen them commercials before. right and they don't they are terrible and they also (laughs) don't give you any disclaimers you know why because they don't know what the disclaimers are yet And so we're really in a testing phase. Right now, most people are just test rats or or lab rats at this point. And they're looking to see what takes place. Lab rats is a strong word. Mm. I wouldn't use that for people, though. Well, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, but when you look at it, if it's it's something that's untested, what else could it possibly be? Do you have the vaccination? Absolutely not. Would you get it? No. Even if you got COVID? I'm not going to get COVID. Stop it. <laughs> okay, so let, let's. Th- can we stay here for a second? Some people are naturally immune, right? No. So why? You why? Why do you? Hold no. on. Why don't? Hold on. I want to stay with Ivan. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to stay with Johnny Gill. Why don't you think that you would get COVID? Because I'm not going to do what it takes to get COVID. Just like I don't do what it takes to get any other type of colds. <laughs> I haven't over the last two decades. I can't think of anything that's affected me longer than 24 hours. So and can now, I? So I keep I keep a good regimen when it comes to my diet. I keep a good regimen when it comes to exercise. I keep a good regimen when it comes to mental stability. Therefore, my body is not sub- is is not something that's subject to sickness and the d- disease attaching itself to. Now, can I? Absolutely, because everybody can get something. But will I? No, because I'm not going to do anything, or I'm not going to change any other regimens that I've had for the last two decades. So I, you know. I, I, well, I think sometimes eyes. COVID, the way I understand it, COVID is not always predicated upon your decisions, but, you know, the other people around you, right. maybe if they have it. And I think that, you know, it's not so much about what you do. Because, because <laughs> Keegan, Keegan, we talked about the health aspect of it. And, Jay, we talked about, you talked about it today on a couple of podcasts ago about, you know, your own body being, your own health being the greatest defense, Keegan, to, um, <laughs> to COVID. Talk about that a little bit, Keegan. Well, I mean, well, Jay said it first, and, and Jay said it first in one of our other podcasts, one of our other episodes about your health being your best weapon, you know, how you take care of your body. And I would say that expand from COVID for a second, just think about health care, period, because health care is an expensive proposition right now, period. So the less healthier you are, the more expensive it's going to be for yourself and your family. So I would suggest that we get our health in order, period. It's stats out there for it, but the majority of the people that get it and die from it, they have a poor health condition. That's the majority of people, right? We can just talk about one set that I heard was like seventy-eight percent was around obesity. Here's the funny thing: I'm obese compared to the stats and diabetes and diabetes, like high cholesterol. Um, and, and so, my to the point: your health is the starting point. For everything. It's like your offensive line. You invest in that, you'll be okay. I think you know whether it's whether it's Absolutely. whether it's COVID, whether it's the flu. Um, we get our own health. No, you can fight off a lot of things, plain and simple. Scott, and that, no, I, Jay said that first. I want to be. I want to get credit with credit. Ela- well, ela- I'm gonna go to Scott, but elaborate on that a little bit, Jay, because we talked about it in the barbershop a little bit today. My, my, I'm gonna go back a little bit. My problem Talking with, Mike, my with the whole thing is every year, every year on cal- every calendar year, way over half a million people die. 
hypertension and heart disease. What is the government doing? What are they pushing <laughs> on us to stop that? Well, I, I, you, what are you they right. So, so, so that, I mean, does that, that many people die in a in a in a swoosh like that? Absolutely. I, well, I haven't seen the stats. So I'm not going to say I did, but that, that's add, been a lot. Add cancer to it. Now you're over a million people. Yes, it's annual. Annually. Annually. Oh, cancer's a billion dollars. Annually. Annually. That's so what, a billion so, dollars. So my point to, uh, to us is, why are we so eager to put something foreign in our body to save us? We're, we're so, uh, you know, big, big medicine, uh, pharmaceuticals make billions and billions of dollars treating stuff. They don't want it. They do not want to cure anything. The vaccine... The hospitals are overloaded with people that are vaccinated and unvaccinated. If you don't believe it, go down and check for yourself. Jay, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. So you're, what you're saying is the immune system that God created is perfect. Or it, it is it's perfect in the way he created. Absolutely. Take that condom off. Absolutely. <laughs> That is not. Take that condom off. What are you talking about? That is not a What are you talking about? You heard it. You heard me. What does that mean? Elaborate. You heard me. Bacteria, science, and math. Are definites. So God, I, and I meant what I said. Uh, God created science, science and, created and math, math are is real. It, science is a practice. It, science that's is a fine. practice. Medicine is a practice. When I'm talking about when, hold, when I say oh, science, math, math. hold, let's math listen finite, to me. But science, science. When I'm talking about bacteria and viruses, they affect the body the same way. Take that condom off. The, the immune system is perfect. Talking Take about. it off. What are you talking about? Don't worry about it, raw dog. What are you talking about? <laughs> what, what, what are because you talking about? That, that because you have to take precautions. Some people believe uh, the same reason you say the same reason you say in the we're talking. You're saying about that a, a you have going. faith. You have faith that you know what my, my my body is good. I'm saying I got faith that I'm good. Look, I take the vaccine. I'm still good. I'm D, okay with it. D, you 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 way off base with what I'm saying. No, I'm not. You're I'm way, dead way, serious. Way off base. No, I, 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 I'm fine base. with this. I, I, I'm okay with, with this. You're way off base. So, Throw that condom off. Hold on for a second, base. D. I see where what, what, what point is he making? What D is basically saying, you, you're saying if your body is a natural, um, um, a water off or whatever, then take the condom off and, and have unprotected sex because you shouldn't get anything, right? Because Ooh. your body protects well, against that. You remember them videos in school? Boy, they right. real. You shouldn't have to, right? They no are videos. real. If you go, if, if you, you deal with someone, you get you know, if that was the case, your body's gonna fight off. It's gonna fight off. It's gonna fight off. That's a reach. But that's a reach. But that's real. But that's real. That's a point. That's a big yoga stretch. Okay, but let's remember Jay's point. Jay's point is that the body is created to do so. So if the body's created to do so, you're not gonna just go and just be. You know, just do anything with your body, but that doesn't mean that Same I'm going to put something foreign in it to actually fight off something that I know question? that's I already I have, but you I have, have you ever consumed alcohol? No. It's a, have anybody ever here consumed alcohol? Absolutely. So, do we know what's in alcohol? Honestly, do we know what's ter- changing our our own conscious? Like you, you go into a different person. You're giving the ingredients. You're giving the ingredients. In are the you? The bottle. Are well, you? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, are hold you? On. So let's do this. Are let's you? Do this. I'm just hold saying. On, hold on. So let's, now hold, you trust hold, the hold government. No, 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 you see on. how it works? Hold, Steve, Steve, Steve. If you're gonna have Tim, a debate, no, no, go if you're gonna have a if you're gonna have a debate, hold <laughs> on. Pray. If you're gonna have a debate, it's too clean. Trust what you know, not what you don't. But do you know it? Hold, but the on, whole point is trust, right? Yeah, hold on, hold on. So if you give me the ingredients, I gotta go by what that is. If I'm gonna not agree with the ingredients, think the ingredients then there's no argument. There's no argument. So as long as so the trust comes if it's on paper. All I'm saying is I can only argue what I see and what I know. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying we we any numbers that you look at will show you that a healthy person fares better against COVID than anything else, vaccine and anything else. You do you do your own research and you come back and show me. But this is this is the situation. Go ahead, Scott. Go ahead, Scott. You're comparing heart disease, which is something that I chose to get because of my own unhealthy living, Everything. versus something that I can get from somebody else because they made a poor decision, simply because I'm in your proximity. I don't have a choice as to whether you give me COVID. It's not. I about, have a choice as to whether that's, I get that, heart disease. That's, 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 that's not Scott, true. That's not my point. Because, though. because my point was true. not about heart. My part, point was the fact that million that a half a million people die every year 
Absolutely. And the government does nothing about it. Over, McDonald's, it's not, McDonald's over a period of time. It's not that responsibility. It's, it's, over it's, it's, one over a year. period of time. If you, you do if not you, die if, from if health, heart disease. If you, if you, if you get in your car, start your car, and you go this to a drive through to buy that Big Mac, and buy seven or eight Big Macs every time you go to McDonald's, that's your choice. Your choice. That's not, that's there, not, there, that has nothing there, to do with, with anybody but your choice. There are choices in the matter. You're absolutely right. What I'm telling you is that the number one uh, uh, defense defense of against any type of the flu virus, anything like that, is taking care of your own immune system. Absolutely, and but, stand, and being proactive and not reactive. But I promise you this: if you go, so if, y'all if, you, if you stay, if you stay in proximity of somebody with COVID. Are you, are you okay, okay with the mandate, Scott? Oh, 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 Hold on. Are you okay with the mandate, Scott? COVID, but the, the 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 effects of COVID on your body. I said from day one, everybody here that knows me really well, I said I'm never gonna say I never get COVID. But what I'm gonna make damn sure is it's gonna catch hell living in my body. That's all you. Can that's do. all I said, and that's all you. Can, and that's, that's all, all anybody can ever do. do. That's all of it. Any of us. Some shout music right now. I will shout right now. Go ahead, Scott. But <laughs> anybody can ever do is what's best for them if they if they were to get it. But what we're talking about is my ability to prevent myself from ever contracting it. If I can, if there's a way for me to not contract it, I'm going to try to make sure I can, I'm not going to get it. Whether it be through vaccine, wearing my mask. But it's going to va- be, but, okay, let's, yeah, let's yeah. go. So, yeah. so, that's, that's the point. Right. Right. For you to not get, we got to get yeah. rid of it. Okay. Yeah. That but, was never created and, for you to I, not get And I agree. I, I know that the vaccine yes, is only was. about 65%. No, no, no. Right no, no, no. Right no, no. Oh, so let, let's, let's, so back, let's get back to the vaccine. Viruses need RNA to exist. They need RNA. That's true. They need yeah. RNA. And what kind of, this, this vaccine is made from M. RNA. Yes. They yes. need yes. RNA. Yes. You got an A in science. Yes. You got an A in science. And your builder's wife. So this vaccine was they created. You're not going to tell me this. RNA. This vaccine was created to prevent you from getting COVID. You know. I didn't say prevent. All I'm saying is it can, it fights against it. So, But you need, it has to be introduced to your, it has to be introduced to your body to create those antibodies. It has to be introduced to your body <laughs> to create those antibodies. Your point, all vaccines, whether it's for COVID or flu, are actually low-level viruses. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, hold on, hold on, hold on, you're right, hold on. okay, you're they're right. They're not medicine, That's right. they're low-level vi- viruses themselves. Yes. To activate your what? Your immune system. Your immune system, which you have complete control over from day one. But I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to get AIDS. I don't want to get HIV to create. I don't want that. Then you wear the rubber. Then you wear the rubber. Don't tell them to get off. You wear the rubber. <laughs> That's right? my point. But to, but to That's Scott's my point. point. Here's the next thing. To Scott, to your point, you do have things in your control. It's called wearing a mask, Absolutely. a face shield, Absolutely. keeping six feet. Somebody gets close to you, say up, something back up. So you can control those things too. The thing about the vaccine is, to your point, it's not going to stop you from getting it. You have to remove that thinking from our minds because it got to come out the commentary. That's not what it's there for. But it can, though. No, it doesn't. No, it cannot. It cannot. I'm out. We have too many variants. I'm out. We have too many variants. No, no. Hold on. One person at all. Go ahead, Keegan. D, hold on. The vaccine is meant to amplify your immune system. Just like a, just like a, a cocktail for HIV amplifies your T cells. It's mm. not a medicine. It's not even what you're saying is so the vaccine. It's a therapeutic. It's a difference. It it creates antibodies. It It makes your immune system. No, it makes makes your immune system. Create antibodies to fight off whatever it is so you won't get it. That's why you take the chicken pot. What what he's saying is is, is, you you have it. If if it's in your body and the antibodies are fighting it, it's in your body. But this is the thing the antibodies, the antibodies that you have in your system are designed to keep whatever you got at a low enough level so that it doesn't leave your body. Now, if it if it spreads mm. far if enough it's in never your been body, introduced, it don't know it how to fight it off. So, no, so let me no, say no, this. No, no, so hold on for a second. Let me say this. So we we yeah we we kind of beat the dead horse, but <laughs> are we? Not not really. You know, people people see it certain ways. Absolutely. But so we talked about you know we know the problem, but what is the solution? So let let's go because what this really is is. Everybody's going to have their opinions. Everybody sees the world differently. Do you see the world one way? Yeah. 
Yeah. Jay, you see it one way. Absolutely yeah. different indeed. Though. You do. <laughs> and both of you guys, you know, two things can be true. It don't have to be both things have to tap. Let me go. Can they? You reasonable because you can got they, the hat on. Can two things really be true? Absolutely. Two things, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Two really? things. Give can, me an example of that. You can be a good guy and be a Cowboys fan. <laughs> that part. Yeah. We're both. Yeah. We're talking on the same subject. <laughs> <laughs> two opinions about one subject. Well, I, I don't think I don't think either person is wrong because I think your health has to be the priority. I will say this, and all jokes aside, if you know us, D and I do this all the time. But the thing is, I think a healthy respect uh, goes a long way. It does. I'll never discourage. One thing I want to make clear is I never discourage anybody from taking a vaccine. I will never ever yeah, because if that what you, if that's what you feel is best for you, absolutely. that's exactly what you should do. Absolutely. But I think the same respect comes if I want to trust my own immune system. If I want to work towards being the best that I can be, I think that everybody should have the same respect. Mm-hmm. Because what I see a lot on mm-hmm. social mm-hmm. media is, oh well, this redneck over here said that COVID wasn't real and he died from COVID. Like, are we celebrating it now? That's terrible, man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's 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 have respect for one another. And what D feels is right is right for him. Correct. What I feel is right, even in my household, it might be split. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. But that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that one is right and one we don't because the fact of the matter is right now we don't know what's and, what's and what's you right. and you get to make and you get to make the choice about your body. You know what I mean? You get to make the choice. About that, but I want to transition to that. Speaking of making a choice, you know, there's been, you Turn know, my mic off. and that was it. Listen, <laughs> what I hear, what you say, Turn my mic off. Yeah, you put it up. Uh, listen, but you know, speaking of choice, you know, you know, Texas being Texas, um, kind of put out another mandate, you know, about uh, abortions, you know, le- making abortions illegal. And I, I wanted to have Ebony on, you know, because I didn't want to have a conversation. About abortion with a bunch of men in the room, that would be um, irresponsible. That would be ridiculous. That would be narcissistic. Um, so you know, I I can't really speak on this subject um, intelligently because I never have to deal with it. In fact, when I heard it, um, if I'm being honest, okay, that was my real response because I'm not a woman. And I think a lot of men got to realize when it comes to um, issues with women, we don't need a voice. And and, and Texas doing this, and, and a little bit of knowledge that I do have, you know, with them doing – normally Texas, they'll jump out in front and do some shit like this. Oh, yeah. Texas is good this, for this, doing this some is, shit. This is very much Listen, this is if very you much want Texas. some shit done, yeah. Texas said, I'll do it. Yeah. You know, that's why I ain't proud of being a Cowboys yeah. fan. So check yeah. that shit out right now. <laughs> doing this yeah. thing. Is it Dallas and Texas? Uh, is it hell Dallas no. Texas? Not, the Dallas I, not the Dallas I shit for. <laughs> but, you, you know, and I, and, I, and I read this, and it's been, you know, abortion has been, it's been such now a politically charged um, subject matter. Um, I'm not, I don't know the validity of it anymore because, um, so many people, you, if you're Republican, you think one way. Um, you're pro-life. If you're, you're, you're Democrat, you you uh, pro-choice. So you you, you and and we we get those definitions in, intertwined, and, and nobody really is, really is listening because everybody's committed to misunderstanding when it comes to their party. I ain't gonna say we got a Democrat in the room, but we got a Democrat in the room. I'm just kidding, D. I'm just playing. I said your name. My bad. <laughs> You know, and I want to bring Ebony in, Ebony, and I, and I want you to, you know, if you know, however comfortable you feel with the subject, because I know it's heavy and I know it's something personal um, with you. And I just wanted to ask you from a woman's perspective, um, and we have a few women out here too as well. They want to weigh in, but you know, what has been your experience with this? What do you think about this whole this mandate? And you know, what has been your experience in that area? If you be, if you can be transparent. Um, first, I'll start off by saying we have assigned a black and white title, pro life versus pro choice, to a subject matter that's not black and white. There are so many gray areas and derivatives um, that you can't just say I'm pro having an abortion or um, against it. Like you, you can't do that. Um, when I was 15 years old. 
I got pregnant. It was my second time ever having sex. Um, we used the condom, but obviously we didn't do it right. Um, you and- wanted the gas station, did you? <laughs> <laughs> or one of the ones out the bathroom? <laughs> Did you give a penny? One, one of them lambskin joints. The lambskin. The rub. The rub. The rub. I said, baby, extra sincere. I don't know about none of that. Yeah, hey, you going to hell, bro? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry about the hell. It's all right. <laughs> we'll cry um, later. <laughs> oh, my but God. you know, I got pregnant, and um, my parents found out, and um, they made me get an abortion. And the guy in the situation um, didn't even tell his parents. Didn't even know. You know, my parents. Took me to the abortion clinic. They paid for the abortion. He continued throughout his life and his day. Um, he, like I said, his parents never even knew that I was pregnant or that I went and had this abortion. Um, and I had this experience. And I had to experience the the trauma of my parents forced me to have it. It wasn't a situation where I had a choice in it. You know, they told me I was going to have an abortion. And, you know, I understand Um they later on, they you know, they apologized for taking that decision away from me. Even at 15, they apologized for taking that decision away from me because later on they realized that it's something that you don't force upon someone. And so they apologized to, to me and they acknowledged that. And that is the problem with this law in Texas because it is a completely eradicating a woman's choice by men who don't even know about the pregnancies who are going on about their lives with no clue and not affected by it at all whatsoever. Those are the men that made this decision. And then to make it criminal, to say, if you do it beyond six weeks, when most women, unless you're actively trying and tracking your cycle to have a baby, you're not going to know that you're pregnant at the six-week mark. You're just not going to. Um so beyond six weeks, and you have it, and it becomes criminal. And then to, to make it a loophole, we say um, the state is not going to sue these people, but the civilians are going to. Like gonna. they deputize people. Right, right. <laughs> and, and we know what, we live in America, so we know what people do with that kind of power. Um, so to me, it's, it's really tragic as a woman having been through the experience and having my choice taken away on a small level and now it's being taken away on a large level how, and how did you feel when you you know when you were 15 and that happened did you feel any like your choice was taken away at that time I don't know if I knew the gravity of the moment um later on um I felt that my choice was taken away and and I I acknowledged the trauma of the situation um but I I understood You know, and my parents acknowledging that they took my choice away and, you know, apologizing for it and, and, you know, saying that they regretted it. I I appreciated that. That's what helped me move past, you know, how I felt about it. But um, in their situation, you know, I had a sister who was just born who wasn't even one years old. I'm 15, you know, by all accounts, you know, I'm going somewhere. I was in honors classes. I was 10th grade. So they were looking out for my future. Kinda there was some. Took a chance of bragging on yourself, dude. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> there was some intention behind their decision yeah. is the point that I'm making. So that can be respected. But, you know, again, taking it back to Texas, the intention behind it, in, in my belief, is when you look at the abortion rates across, you know, um, by race, white people, United States at large, are at a higher rate having abortions than black people. Mm. So it's about a 39% to 35% um, percentage. So you say that's not that big of a percentage. But when you break that percentage down by the number of babies, and then you look at that over a prolonged period of time, and what it says to me is they want to make sure that they stay the majority. Yes. So let me let me take away the option so that we can make sure we stay the majority. And Texas is the second largest state in the United States. No California question. being the first, they're never going to pass a law like this. So Texas sets the precedent as the, as the second largest state. So other states like Texas then follow suit, ultimately to make sure they stay the majority. 
Wow, that's, Jay, that's, that's, that's when, facts. That's what facts. what do you think? Of, and I want to go to Keegan too. What what do you think about the law that passed about the abortion? I can't speak intelligently on it at all. What about you, Keegan? Well, I'll start by saying Ebony hit the hit the nail on the head. She did right. Um, I w- I would say a couple of things as it relates to the law. It's not really a law. They circumvented the Constitution. And what I believe is, you said it earlier, but we don't have rights. We got to act like that the, the playing field has some rules that we all going to kind of abide by, right? And so they sidestepped the Constitution. They know it was not going to hold up in court. So they say the government can't enforce it. D will. I even will. No state, no federal government is going to enforce it. But that's, that's why they can do it. Now, I'm going to make a stretch here. Follow me for a second. We had a discussion in the barbershop about power, whether it's in the dollar or it's in Washington politics. Yeah, Keith had that conversation yeah, with us. Yeah, and Tap made an excellent point. <laughs> Tap made an excellent point. Tap said that when you can buy a vote, come on, that's where power resides. Come on, congressmen didn't write this bill; lobbyists did. Dollars paid for this thing to get written. So what I see is. A playbook for me to work with my people to put dollars together to get power so we can start buying legislation to impact our lives because they're not going to do it for us. But the bill in and of itself is tragic, is reprehensible. And if you break it down, look at each layer of it. The <laughs> what they did, I think you can argue, might have pushed women's Rights back a few years. Absolutely. How so they how they structured it. It's it's, it's terrible. It's go terrible. ahead. You've been on one today too. I agree that yes, money does matter. Mm-hmm. Lobbyists do matter. Policy matters, and who you put in office matters. Mm-hmm. Let's remember this. Could the Supreme Court shut this down? Absolutely. They cannot. They could have. No, they can't. They could have. No, they yes, can't. they they could have called this. Explain Unconstitutional. No, that's that's the thing. They can't. Here's the reason why. Go ahead. Because you were deputized, not the government. See, if the government, it's still a policy. It, it's it's actually it's it's, it's, it's more still a, like a statute. It's still a, it poli- a statute, yeah. policy, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. The Supreme Court could have shut this down, but because of who we had in office, so I ain't gonna say who voted for who who didn't. I know who tap Let me just say something. Who we had in office appointed certain individuals and put them in power. So now there's a majority on that Supreme Court. And they could have shut this down. The, it, it can go, it's, it can still go. Both down. ways. I'm saying, I'm saying, you're right. Because Biden, Biden is suing, right? I'm with you. He's going to, he's going to go there. He's going to try and put but, more but, people but, on there. But whether it's a Democratic controlled or Republican controlled Supreme Court, it doesn't matter. They, no, they can't. They can't. They cannot argue against the constitutionality because it's not being enforced by the government. That was the whole point. How they wrote the, that's why they wrote the, word, the way they wrote it because it cannot be enforced by the government. And if that's the case, it's not going to be looked at as being constitutional. It's, it's not going to. They're going to push it right back to the state. Say, well, you got to enforce it based on who sues who. That's what's going to go. They're going to push it right back to the lower courts. So the Supreme Court has, you say, no authority, no that's zero why, that's authority. That's why it was written the way it was written. Uh, that's so, exactly why. So I go, Scott. So let me ask you a question. So you know, obviously, everybody doesn't see this situation the same. You know, Republicans have a view of, of pro life, um, and they involve a spiritual aspect. You know, you know, they believe obviously. Um, yeah, you, uh, well, you, you know. So and maybe you can come back and you to Ebony as well because you can be kind of the lead speaking on this. Um, how does God see abortion um, in your estimation? Evan, you can answer that same question as well since you had the experience. Um, how do we believe that God sees the situation um, from abortion? Is it, um, it's kind of what I asked Jay, but is it, you know, when life, when you conceive it, is it life? Is it embryo? What, how, do, how, does, how, do you, how do we reconcile God in this, or how do we put God in the mix when it comes to um, abortions? God says to be fruitful and multiply. Um, those times are a lot different than now because in those times there weren't nearly as many different ways. We've, we've created so many new ways to sin. It's ridiculous. First of all, 
But when you when you put a spiritual spin on what's going on, at the end of the day, you have, and, I, and, I, and I'm not a partyist by any stretch of the imagination. I don't consider myself a Democrat. I don't consider myself a Republican. But I absolutely am 100% independent because they both have, they have some things that I agree absolutely. with on both sides. Stuff. Absolutely. Um, but but at the end of the day, for the Republican Party to be a party of freedom of speech and freedom to do whatever I want to do, then to put out a bill to say that I want to control what you do, that's very contradictory. To say that I'm going to put a mandate to say that you can't have abortions when I'm, I'm pro- Choice on everything else, Man. except my control yeah, over bro, what preach. you want to do. Ooh, that's good. And COVID. Preaching. And COVID that's vaccine. Good. Somebody I caught preaching. That. Scott, that's good. It's, it's it's the facts, though. I mean, if you if you really pay attention to it, they they it's it's a situation where you're never going to be able to control my speech, but I absolutely want to control what you do with your own body. That's what the situation. So their moral compass is not at work at here. It's 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 more no. different. Ebony, what is your what? How do you see God in this picture when it comes to abortion, and, and you know, as you got older, how did you know? How did you because it you ne that never goes away. I, I'm assuming I'm not a woman, but I don't know. Um, how did you reconcile that from a spiritual perspective? Um, I reconciled it because through just just spiritual intelligence, I understand that you know I serve a God of grace and mercy. Um, mm -hmm. How how far does He separate my sin? He for, he forgets about it, you know. So from that perspective, it's not something that weighs me down um, spiritually. But what I will say is if the creator of the universe says, I put you here, but I also give you free will. There's my perfect will, but there's also permissive will. Either way, my grace abounds in both places. If the creator says that, how can man create laws that takes away that choice? It does not make sense. That's good. And let's talk about the the hypocrisy of Republican Party. And I'm I'm not gonna I'm gonna beat them up a little bit. They will do everything they can to make you um, keep the infant or keep the utero alive, right? But once they come here, that they that will part. do absolutely nothing to help you take care of the kid, mm -hmm. right? So I think we gotta look at this as not as some some spiritually guided point they tried to make. They was trying to control a narrative on something they didn't know they can get votes for. It's as simple as that. It's the same. It's the same situation of um, I'm going to arrest as many black people as I can and then ship them to a prison, and then I'm going to ship that and make sure that that prison is in a Republican state where I can count them as a census, mm -hmm. and make sure that I have more people to actually vote, more more senators, and more people that I can actually use to my advantage in this state. So that I can take it away from the democratic states. It's the same situation. So we're but, is but the, Go ahead. So what I was gonna say is, but that bill isn't to affect any of the people in this room. At they, all. They they don't care they don't care about us if anymore. the people in this room are having abortions. Have they don't care about want. the people in this room actually um bringing forth new life. Because it was to a point that Ebony made earlier, it's about keeping the majority. And so because it's it's because they have a lot of women that are not of color that are going and getting abortions, especially when it comes to the Catholic Church, because they don't believe in abortions. And what's happening is a lot of women, after they go and they get pregnant by their husbands, after having four, five, six, seven children, they're going and having secret abortions. And because of that, that's why they're instituting this law so they can keep the majority in America because of how difficult it is for them to actually have birth and actually be able to give birth. They're trying to make sure that they don't die out in numbers because at the rate that black people repopulate or people of color, by 2052, we would be the majority in America. And that's what the issue is about. That's And that's why it's coming at such... A prominent time. I think there's some truth in that, but I think you're giving them too much credit. I think it's simply about votes. I think it can amplify the evangelical community, the church community, to keep that voting block in their favor. I think it's all. I think it's all it's about. And speaking of the church community, you know, trans, you know, kind of transitioning to the church community. I'm glad you brought that up. That was 
That was good, Keegan. I mean, I don't mind, think bro. you knew it, bro. I mean, my guy. Mind, I think it's the haircut, my guy. It might be. <laughs> And it, 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 because both of these and subjects, the, 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 the vaccine, <laughs> my man tap, two locations, one school, Premier Grooming Lounge, <laughs> and a Dallas Cowboy fan <laughs> with an orange shirt. Yeah. Peach. Two things. Is that that peach? Oh, that peach. is peach. Yes, peach. peach. You got a peach shirt on? Get it right. Different. Boy, you different. My goodness. <laughs> 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 but you know, you know, speaking of church, you know. The, the mandate on the vaccine, the, the abortions, you know, where's our foundation? You know, we talk about these situations, and, and it feels like we're in a nomad land, Ebony, D. It feels like we, we're kind of in the wilderness. We don't have somewhere to go. But we used to. Um, that, you know, the, the black church used to be a political refuge um, for topics like this. We were able to go in, regardless of what we believed, if you, most people don't, most people probably do know that Matt, uh, uh, Martin Luther King was a minister, but we don't dress him as a minister. We know him as a civil rights leader, correct? Because he was involved in politics and it was in the church. Um, and even Malcolm X at the mosque, it was about political power and, and, and trying to navigate, help, help black folks navigate through issues like this. Um, and I want to go to you for a second tap. You've been quiet for a second with your peach shirt on. You just peachy. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, can the church, the black? Let me give my experience a little bit about a black church too before I go. You know, it, at, at a time when I grew up in, you know, the black church, it was it was one of the most happiest. When I was a little kid, just growing up, every we went there, I felt safe. I felt. You know, like you know, the, the mothers of the church, the, the deacons of the church. You know, it it was it was like they were superheroes. They they protected you at all costs. Um, the black church, even go, dating back to slavery, was a safe haven. Was a lot of slave for a lot of slave it, it, slaves. It gave them a sense of refuge. It gave them a sense of purpose. Um, it was somewhere to, to escape from. So the black church was much more than a building. Um, I think it was our moral compass. It was our accountability. It, it meant a lot to us. Um, I'm not saying it's not that now. I'm just saying the political aspect of it has kind of been removed a little bit um, because of obvious reasons. But, Tap, what what role does a church spiritually play in helping us navigate and finding solutions um, spiritually through these issues that we're dealing with right now that are major in our community? I think even in times past, it, even now, I think it, I think it has not changed. I don't think good. the church okay. has changed. I think it's still that same haven. It's still a place where we can collect, collectively get together, and we can discuss these type of topics. Um, it just depends on the church that you go to. That's good. Um, That's good. You know, but there are definitely churches um, out here who, um, who push our culture, who push our community further. They have our interests in mind. Um, whether it be the testing sites from when we talked about COVID, whether it be it's about good. getting more of us out to vote and, you know, educating us on some of the candidates that's, that are out there or just, you know, I've seen more recently in churches. I've seen more um, stances from pastors to empower our people more so than I've ever seen in, in times past, even, even now. Wow. Um, I think the church is. A, I think the church is still a, a very valuable resource and a tool, you know, for our community. Um, is it perfect? Absolutely not. It's not perfect. But what organization is? That's that's facts. And D, you're a deacon, a trustee. Let me get it right. I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> you control the money, trustee. <laughs> you're yes, the power he does. The, he's the power yes, in the he church. Does. He's the guy. <laughs> he said, <laughs> "Who you gonna fire now?" Go ahead. <laughs> Get rid of the preacher, but I ain't gonna go there. Um, but D, how do we amplify what Tap is talking about to 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 really um, bring it into perspective? How do we amplify that message if it's happening to 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 really you know get on a larger scale? I think that for me, the church is what Tap described, but I think what has to start is we as individual men have to be 
the leaders in our households. And if that if the church is important to you in your in your household, then from there you will be able to identify whatever that church is and teach your children and lead your family in a way as such. Because the church hadn't changed. There ain't nothing changed. But have we changed? That's the question. Because are we as men leading our family like we're supposed to when we're talking about church? Do you agree with that? <clears throat> no. <laughs> Somehow I knew you. <laughs> Politics and God don't mix. Because growing up, we essentially from the same place. Oh, yeah. If you go to church and you believe differently than the majority, you ostracize. So when you when you when you bring politics, everybody knows that when election time comes, you get these politicians and the preacher going to invite them into church. And you're going to you're going to you're going to try to get them, get your people. Hey, he came to our church. I'm going to vote for him. You know nothing about this dude. Right? God and politics don't I, I don't practice organized religion. I grew up in the church. My dad is a minister now. He started preaching like after I left home. I don't I don't I don't believe in organized religion. Not against it. My connection is with God, not the church. Um but I don't think the two have any place with one another. Because once you become biased, you're pushing another set of people out. That's why I feel the way I feel. You have to if, if when you when you're dealing with God, you gotta stay neutral. They are. They are, they are separate. Politics and church are separate. And they, and they have no place. I, 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 I do believe that. Because the people asked for Saul, and God told them that they didn't need a king. Mm-hmm. And when and they wanted a king, they uh, begged for a king, and they got what they were asking for. Right. <laughs> it's right about that. I, I, don't disagree, <laughs> I, don't dis, I don't necessarily think, and I think, I think it depends on how you view politics. You know, I think there, there's an ugly part of politics, <laughs> but, but there is... There's a there, there's a practicality to spirituality as well. You have to be practical in certain instances. Like we talked about, we talked about the abortion. We talked about a lot of different issues that, you know, even even when Martin Luther King was in the church, he was talking about um, before he got, w- w- was killed. I think it was the uh, um, the strike with the trash man. Correct. Um, I only before it was killed. Yeah, it was no, it's the poor people's march um, that he was doing. But that that necess- that was political. Um, but it was advantageous to the people as well. I, I think everybody that, that that point could understand that we want to get out of poverty, um, although we may not see spirituality the same, but we need political power. Now, now, let me make a point. Now, what I didn't say is that as a reverend, you can't be a leader in the community. I didn't say that. I said the church and politics don't mix. They don't mix. So outside of the church, outside of the church, if Tap was a minister, that doesn't mean that he can't be a leader in the community and put and be an, a, 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 an elite advocate for change in his community. That doesn't mean that. But inside the church, if you're talking about the church as a body of as as what we most know as, as being the body of Christ, politics and that, or, or because what are you saying? Because this, these people over here are this, and these people over here are that, then. One is more godly than the other. You can't do that. I, I don't think it's a matter of being godly. I, I just think it's a matter of understanding the situation. I think that you know, you know, desperate time calls for different desperate measures, depending on what the situation is. And I think, I think you know, we do have the ability to get on one accord when it comes for a cause to helping all of us. Now, will some people always be divided? Yeah, I believe that. You know, I believe that it can't get so intertwined to where it mixes up what we're there for. But if there's a particular issue, I don't think they can mix. I just think they can have a cohesive. Um, I, I think they can value each other uh, for the for the moment at that point. I don't think they have to live there forever because politics don't always have to be in the church. But I think when it comes to certain subjects, Ebony, what's your perspective on that? Um, Tim, we good on time? We almost. I think it's twofold. Um, I think on a high level, like, you know, doing a, a voter registration, you know, yeah. the church can be involved in that way. But to Jay's point, coming down on a on a smaller scale and a more specific scale, I think then the church has to say, okay, 
this is this is the height that. of where, that, where yeah. we need to go that. with these conversations in order not to alienate people because the church should be a welcoming place for all people. Agreed. And so Agreed we that. can't start alienating people based off of difference in ideals because you find differences in ideals in households. No question. So you're for sure going to find it in a church body of people. And when you start talking about those specific details when it comes to politics, you're going to divide. And, and me, that's not me, what we want. Let me ask you this question. What, what other place other than the church is equipped to handle such matters like a abortion, so, such matters like tap a vax. What what else can we go, Jay, to have a conversation that brings that drills it back down? Whether you believe the Bible, not everybody don't believe the Bible in the same way, Keegan. What where can we go then, Keegan, as a foundation? If not the church, is my that's why I was bringing up this whole thing. Where can we go for refuge to where we can have this conversation without it turning to this versus that and, and kind of pulling us apart? And we can find a commonality even in our disagreement and figure out a way to be still be productive because regardless of the fact that when you talk about the vaccine, there's people who believe on your side, there's people who believe on your side. But we got to figure out how to work together because what if Scott right? What if you right? We, we don't know yet. And again, we're still in a state of ambiguity. We still don't know what COVID-19 is. We still don't understand what the reason why they're doing abortion. Some people say vote. Some people say this. So it's a lot of confusion. Where do we go, Keegan? If not the church to find that type of refuge, well, I don't. I don't define the church as just a building. That's good. So there's a body of believers right here. That's good. He said, "There's two or more gathered in my name. I am what." So shall I be? I pre- Tim, so, you should have hit that clap button. So, but you're working with the, so, the, the camera, my guy. So, so for me, we have to be responsible leaders in our community. Don't put the onus on the reverend, because right. I, I do That's agree good. with Jay and Ebony. When the reverend is in the pulpit and he's talking about politics, not talk about the gospel. I want him talking about the gospel in the pulpit, plain and simple, right? So that's when me, Tap, Steve, Jay, Ebony get together. We talk about what we got to do as a, as a community, actually rise up for legislation purposes. So for me, let the body of believers be a body of believers. Don't just be pew sitters on Sunday and then Monday through Saturday, mm-hmm. I don't talk. Absolutely. Let's connect. Let's mm-hmm. talk about this. So this is the church. It is. Absolutely. We, we so, know in my question. In my we speak mind. on issues. Um, Every week, we today we had to stop talking about certain things so that we can bring it here. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So that's where it starts. You know, when we when we're fellowshipping on the weekends, yeah. we talk about yeah. the same stuff we talk about here. Exactly. We talk about home life. We talk about you know things in our community. That's where it starts. And I think that once we all become accountable, I think that's when we we begin to grow. Um, you know, D and I. Our plight is the same. We're trying to get to the same place. We have a difference of opinion. Just different ideas on how to get there. Yeah, yeah. 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 but we're on, we on the Your way GPS to the same going place. this way. Yeah. He, he Absolutely. Just, and that's why I have a ton of respect for this man. And I think that that's where yeah. it starts is that we have to get to a point to where we can agree to disagree, but we can love each other knowing that because I've learned a lot from everybody in this room. Whether I agree with everything that they said or not, I've learned a lot from everybody in this room. And I can say for me, me and Ebony, I, t- I said it on the last po- podcast that we we grew kind of grew up together, and she my she my best friend, and we we know everything about each other. There's nothing that we don't know about each other, and we went at it. You know, we've had you know just all knocked down, drag out um, fights, but we you know we did we learned how to disagree. Mm-hmm. You know, we learned how to look at each other and say, okay. Bro, all right, okay. You know what I mean. We see one thing one way. You got we it. see this this way, and, and what and, and and what it's about. Life is not really about being right or wrong. It's about finding perspective. And when you find perspective, you learn how to look at Tap's view and his view and make a sound decision. And I think we don't know how to do that sometimes um, because sometimes our egos in a way. Sometimes our our thirst for being right. You know, being right. You can only go far as being right. You can't go no further. With perspective, I can look at so many different scenarios and make a decision because if you're stuck in your own right, you're just stuck there and you can't move from it. And most people tap like, I know you like to be right about certain things when you talk about LeBron, but I ain't going to go there. I know. <laughs> That's your Dallas Cowboy <laughs> brother, by the way. <laughs> see, see how y'all do it? We can't Cowboy escape brother. a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We almost made it through the school without bringing up the No question. 
No question. <laughs> but we, we but the, you know, the point is, is and I, I'm glad you said that, Jay. But we, our, we must find commonality and the whole solution, even to the vaccine, even to talking about abortions, even to talking about the responsibility of the black church and what they mean. We are the black church. We are the moral comp. These men and women sitting in this room right now, we're the moral compass right now. Are we going to get everything right? Tap. Absolutely not. Are we going to do the right thing all the time? No, Jay. We're going to fall. We're going to do some bullshit. I promise you, everybody in this room going to do a lot of bullshit. But grace abounds. And we must give it to everybody else. And we must learn how to live together in harmony. And we must learn how to lift each other up. If we don't do that, we lose every time. Because everybody disagreed today, Tap. Everybody didn't Absolutely. see. Everybody don't see the world the same. Keegan, how do we move forward? I want to get a round table before we go. With everybody, Keegan, how do we move forward? How do we learn how to deal with these strong issues, especially the vaccine we talked about? Because it's it's not just the vaccine; it speaks to a larger issue of division in our in our community and how we're so quick to bite each other's heads off. Because contrary to popular belief, um, um, Jay, you and J, you and Jay are the exception to the rule. Normally, argue, normally things like this it goes really bad. When people don't agree, they stop talking. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't see each other. They the friendships break up for stuff like this. Keegan, how do we begin as a as a culture to to start to find commonality? And I want to go around I, the room before we end. I make two points now, and I'll try to offer up a solution. The first point is, if our relationship can't withstand disagreement, we don't have a relationship. We have a we have a contract. We have a contract. That's good, right? That means if you do, that was a clap too. Right? That was a clap. <laughs> so we should disagree. Right, because that's going to make each one of us sharpen our iron. Come on, right? so that's where your that's where your friction comes into play. So I, I believe that's also I think we got to stop letting the powers that be divide us. Come on, right. So when you get put in a box because of politics, if you don't agree with this man or you do agree, you're not on my team no more. We got to stop that, like for real. That, that's immature. It, it's childlike, right? Yeah. So we got to get better at working with folks that we actually don't agree with to make something happen for all of us. It's going to be good. And I think from a solution perspective. We talked about COVID vaccine. We talked about the um, the abortion law in Texas. And those two things, the one thing I took away was those two things was done by money that control politics. As a culture, we got to start getting better working together so we can actually start controlling our political futures with finance. With finance. Because I'm telling you, without money, we will not beat them and we will not push our agenda forward. And so Tap said in the barbershop, J.B. said for a while, a financial base for our culture is a starting point. Start bringing forth that kind of solution. Jay, what you got, my guy? Um, I think we start with respect. Um, one thing that we have to have for one another is respect. Um, I often tell Tap, I may not have disclosed this to everybody else, but sometimes I'll take the opposite. Whether I believe it or not, I'll take the opposite end of the argument. Just so we can, as a group, we can gain a perspective on and, and see a different perspective. Because there's always another perspective. And one thing that I've learned is that if we're not able to, to understand things from different perspectives, there's no growth there. And one thing that happens in our community is we feel like that we all have to agree or something's wrong with you. And we don't all have to agree. We don't, we, we don't all have to agree on everything. I believe, and, and and to piggyback on what Keegan said, I believe that we will, the answer for our community, poweronomics. I don't think that we'll ever vote ourselves out of a situation. I don't think that we'll ever legislate ourselves out of anything unless we gain financial a financial base and learn to start buying our way into rooms that we're not allowed into right now. That was your point originally. I just took it and I ran with it. I'm just letting you know. Jay Nomics and Keegan Nomics. <laughs> Tap was in there too. Tap, Tap Nomics. Cowboy Nomics. See, you I just said fucked it all. <laughs> I I Cowboy Nomics. Scott, what you got, my guy? Um, community starts from understanding that it's it's all about being a neighborhood. We got to stop being the hood and bring the neighbor back. We got to get to a point to where we are cohesive again. And like you said, we can agree to disagree, but we got to first agree. That agree portion has to be first that we can disagree. Mm -hmm. And coming from a stance of I know that I'm not always right, 
simply because I thought it or simply because somebody had heard it from somewhere else doesn't mean that it was right. Mm-hmm. Um, there has to be a level of flexibility. If you're not willing to bend for your brother, who are you going to bend for? We can't continue to put our own issues in other people's hands and expect them to be able to take care of us. We've done that too long in this country. Like he mentioned before, um, government assistance is never meant to really truly assist us. It was just meant to sustain us and, and to pacify us. We have to understand that we have to educate ourselves more than what any school book is going to teach you because if they really wanted us to know about financial freedom, they would teach finance in high school. They would teach it as you grew up. It wouldn't be foreign to you when you became an adult. That's true. We have to understand that we have to do those things on our own. We have to make sure that we're actually putting those things in place for our children because a lot of times we don't put things in place for our children because we never took the time to do it ourselves. So the moment that you get an opportunity to learn something, you need to pass down what you get to your kids and make sure that your kids understand that it's okay for them to learn from someone else. That's good. Trust. you got to learn to trust somebody because everybody that made it somewhere had to trust somebody to get to where they got to. And th- I think we're starting that. We- we're building that atmosphere here. And I think, it's again, it starts with the, por- the-, the amplified voices in the room. Keeking what you got. I'm not keeking, but I'm sorry. Y'all got the same hat. Well, that, that was a, a compliment to me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Johnny Gill. Ooh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ivan. Um, I think um, there's a reason why God intervened with the Tower of Babel. A lot of people think that it was to, you know, stop them from building a tower all the way to heaven. I believe that it was going to limit everybody's gift of them actually being different. Because by us being different from one another... I can get something from Scott that I couldn't get from anybody else. You have a specific gift that I couldn't get from anybody else. D has a gift. Jay has a gift. Keegan has a gift. And so when you're all doing the same thing methodically, nobody actually gets the opportunity to grow. Mm -hmm. Growth always is going to bring forth a friction. So I think it's all about us actually having a difference of opinion and actually being able to respect one another in those differences. As, as we do so, and I'll just piggyback off of something that Scott said. It's about community. That's where it has to start. If our communities don't come together and start to respect one another, then we won't have that potential to grow. And as our communities start to respect one another and actually bring the neighbor back to the hood, at that point then we can do exactly what Keegan and Jay said. We can actually get our economics together so that we can buy our way. Because just like the statue or the bill that they have in Texas, we'll be able to be in those rooms now, and we can actually get our hate laws passed. (laughs) So I think it's about us actually coming together and actually putting the neighbor back in the hood. And once we do that, use our economics to build and move forward. I have a nomics. And by 2052. Jay nomics and Keegan nomics. Will be the there's majority. A, there's a pattern here. D, what you got, my guy? I concur with everything that's been said. Um, I appreciate my family of how I was been raised. Because there was a sense of community that was just that was just entrenched in me. Over the last week, man. It's more heavy on me that our kids are out here killing one another. Like, I'm, I'm for real. Like, it's weighed heavy on me. Like, it's been on my mind because that's what I do. And I believe in us as a community, but, like, I believe in each one, teach one. And if we don't do that, then we've lost the sense of who we are as a people because community means something. I've learned to appreciate the roles that each individual here plays in the community. I think we have to go back to that because we've lost that because I can't believe that there's individuals that believe it's okay, it's okay that the moral compass has been shifted. It's okay for me to pump 150 bullets into somebody's dwelling. We've, we've, it's us. When I say us, I'm talking about us as a people. We've lost 
those individuals. We are not doing what, we, what we're supposed to do to show yo. Because my I know my people did it for me, and it's our job to go deck say, look, let me come back and show you this is how we roll. And we've lost that. And I think that I appreciate this circle. I call it a power circle because we all have the same moral compass. We all have the same vision. We all have the same understanding. We have the all same values that we're trying to to do right. And I appreciate community. I appreciate just trying to do what's right. And I hope that all of us can remember that because we all got kids. And we're trying to instill in them those same values. And for me, man, I've taken it upon my, myself to make it my profession, not only just to instill in my kids, but other people's kids. That sense of community that we had, right? Like, look, man, you don't have to do that. And I hope that we can kind of build that sense of community and continue to grow that because you think these laws that they create now to fight against us, man, imagine if we did that. Man, they'd be creating, they, we, they might try and go back to slavery. For real, if we really did that and and reach back, each one teach one, man, they couldn't handle it. Even though we thirteen percent, just be in couldn't take it. We ain't got. We don't tell them everything. We don't flash it. We keep it low. L, what you got? Um, I think my thoughts align with all the sentiments that have been spoken already. Um, I've always said it's imperative to have a worldview. To understand that your life experiences, there's more in the world beyond your experiences. That's good. And and when you can begin to understand shared experiences allow you to see the world in a better way. That's good. And gain a better understanding and see actually see things in its totality. Because you have a collection of people all with different vantage points creating a wholeness. Of, of the ideas that we're trying to prepare for. So having a worldview, I think, is so important. And I don't think we talk about that. You know, I don't, I don't think we, we teach our children to have that. We raise them the way that we want them to be, and then that's how we send them out into the world. Not making room for, there's other people that don't think like you. Respect their thoughts. Take what you can learn from their thoughts to add value to your own life. So I think that's important. And secondly, you know, if we take... Our instruction, the Bible, when you look at Moses, Moses went through the desert for 40 years. He didn't get into the promised land, but he set Joshua up for it. That's good. And so as a parent, as a mother, I may not get to the promised land, but I can guarantee you that my son will. Undoubtedly, he will, because I'm going to do everything in every breath that I take to ensure that he does. And so I've made mistakes that may not allow me to get there, but he will. And when we look at community in that way, maybe I'm not as financially savvy as I need to be. Maybe I didn't, you know, get properties and things of that nature. But let me put that into my children. Let me put those thoughts and those ideas mm, into my children. That's good. So if I don't achieve those things, they will be empowered too. That's deep. If I had a clap, I would give it to you right now. <laughs> Tim won't hit the button. And that's good. You may, and Martin Luther King said, I may not get there with you. And I think I think this is where you know the we have to be selfless and realizing at Keegan you may not see the very thing of you you may not see your vision all the way out you may see the vision but you may not get to live the vision. So we're Joshua, we the ones. No. I think it's I think it rotates. I think I, I think, don't know. I think you become Moses at the end. I think you become Moses then you become Joshua. You well, become Moses. Well, I, would say, I think. Yeah. I would, I would say no matter what I attain, I expect my children to make it even more. They supposed to take it. And, 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 and Joshua did. Joshua represent better. It, he represented right. best. Right. He represented the best of what Moses produced out of that. And and I think that's a brilliant point, Evan. And that's hard. Think about it, Jay. You work all your life. Selfishly, you do want to see some of those fruits, mm -hmm. but you may not get to eat all of the fruit, and you got to be okay with that. And I think if you're okay with that, you'll understand and you'll cherish the moments that you do have. And, Tap, what, what, what you got, my guy, before we end it off? You know, I had one thing that I was going to say, but just really listening to D, you know, I want to reach out and I want to apologize to that generation right behind us. Mm. Come on. Because I had OGs, I had people look out. For me, I had people That's reach back point, and pull and good. pull That's me good. up, and I think it's been our turn. It's good. And we fumbled the ball. Yeah. 
We've dropped the rock. some accountability. We've dropped, we've dropped the ball. You know, this whole generation, we're looking at this next generation and they wilding out and they doing X, Y, Z. That's because we are not doing what we were supposed to do. Did we and go I'm to the suburbs? Did we, did we get our careers and our jobs? Yeah, that's exactly say, what we did. And we say, you know what? Yeah. I'm over here. That's exactly Y'all what deal we with these folks because I remember mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. aunties and the, they were mm-hmm. they were mm-hmm. reprimand, bro. Absolutely. But now it's just like we're nowhere to be found. And, mm-hmm. I, and I don't, and again, I'm not going to say we all are part of the black bourgeoisie. But we took on that spirit a little bit mm-hmm. because it's – and, again, that goes back to the disease of poverty. Yeah. When you get out of it, you don't want any remnants of it. You don't want right. to be around it. Right. You don't even want people to believe that you are <laughs> ever been in poverty. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and we like to sell the struggle. We'll sell the struggle, but we like to let people know we overcame it. But there's a generation of kids that are out there. That don't hear men talk like this. That if normally men were having conflict, they would be fighting. Absolutely. You know, a lot of a lot of cultures they banter like this all the time, and they they find a solution because they understand the bigger picture. What what is the utilitarianism of everything? What's the greatest good for the greatest number of people? And I think that's what we have to look at while keeping our integrity. Man, this has been a inaugural in this building. Great first podcast. Uh, I, I really believe. Uh, what are you pointing at, Tim? To look at that way, yeah. Jesse. Yeah, I got to I got. I'm gonna go there in a second because you know, I, and I want to be thankful too because we got a, we got our Thank first you, sponsor. EP. Thank you. Yeah, this guy tell him we got our first sponsor, man, and, and, and it's Walker Realty Group. And Walker Realty Group is a black-owned real estate brokerage that specializes in residential buyers and sellers in Charlotte, Greensboro, and Durham and surrounding areas. Please visit Walker Realty GRP.com to search and find your dream home. And Jarius, my guy, he supplied us with this room. That's a blessing. Y'all, please go out and shop with my guy. He's our first sponsor. It's historical. This is what the black experience was always supposed to be about, us coming together, using our resources. And the guys in this room helped with this equipment. Jay, Keegan, uh, uh, you gave $40. So you really I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just playing. Wow. Every, no, I'm just kidding. Did you that is a Dallas I'm Cowboy just kidding. right there. I'm just kidding. But everybody in this room collectively came together and helped build something that nobody back was really, um, nobody felt the heavy burden. That's what networks are about. That's what's coming together about. Everybody collectively coming together. We got we got catered. We got a catering service tonight from Scott's beautiful wife, and we we have so much that we can do together. That we can grow together as a community. All we got to do is use each other. That's it. All we got to do is use each other. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. We got a little start. We got a, we got a started a little late, but it was a blessing, and everybody got a chance to express um, their invaluable uh, opinions. And I think it's going to go far. Tap, I love what you said. Let's reach back to the children. Let's really um, start to put together stuff. Because again, like I said, this is not just a podcast. We want to be bigger than that. We're an organization that reaches out to the community. We want to be an organization that really gives back, not only just verbally, but with our time and physically. And um, guys, thank you for coming. The Deep Service Podcast, please subscribe on YouTube. The Deep Service Pod, please subscribe on Instagram. The Deep Service Pod, Pod, we out.